on behalf of Badminton Pan American Confederation, we give you the warmest welcome to our Coaches Corner program. My name is Richard Wong, and I'm honored to be the moderator of today's session. Today, we start the fourth season of the program. Therefore, we will give the floor to Mr. Vishy Tolan, President of Badminton Pan Am. Go ahead, Mr. Tolan. Thank you, Richard. So happy to see you. Dear colleagues and friends, I am pleased to address you for the start of a new year. Anything that we lived and learned in 2020 was the pandemic led us to try harder to keep the shuttle in the year. This new virtual world allowed us to stay close to you and enjoy the new edition of the Badminton Pan Am Home Cup, including our para badminton styles. It was simply exciting. The new season of the BPAC Coach Corner program invites us to continue training ourselves in the art of our sport from the technical and research areas. In addition, the virtual trainings also allow us to meet new shuttle time teachers in the region. Following strict security protocols, we experience a new tournament of the 2020 Pan Am Circuit, the Mexicano International, and we saw how some associations organize local tournaments with similar precautions. With some interviews, we remember the historic gold medal of our athletes at the Lima 2019 Parapan American Games. It has been a year since we endured those emotions and we have great memories of those days. I just wanna say a special thanks to all the associations that joined us at our annual general meeting, the virtual in 2020. We would have loved to meet in person, but technology could not afford us. And fortunately, technology helped us continue our work despite the current pandemic, prioritizing the health of everyone in the region. Thank you all for your understanding and dedication. BWF started the year with the closing of the world tour. Our best badminton players from Canada and the USA have represented us in, in an excellent way in this difficult competition. Congratulations on it. And as we look forward to Tokyo 2020, it is my hope that the countries and our players will take and seize the opportunity as we try to qualify as much of our players as possible. It is a dream of many of our players to be representing their country at the Olympics. And this year in Tokyo is no different, albeit taking a longer time. So I wish all our players and you our members, along with your team, all the success possible. We are already in a new year, perhaps with some uncertainties, but we are sure that we can continue to count on the support and effort of all of you to keep in play the Pan Am Shuttle. As we move into this first session, translation from the year plan to daily plan with complex, and I put in bracket here, individual practice every day from micro, sorry, from macro to micro. Thank you, Martin, for joining us in this our first session. And I look forward along with the rest of our participants to what you have to share with us today. My final words, keep taking care of yourself and your loved ones. I wish you all a successful seminar this afternoon. Thank you. Back to you, Richard. Today, we have the pleasure of having one of the most emblematic coaches in the bad world of badminton. I refer to Professor Martin van Dormelen from Netherlands will talk to, us, talk to us about a great topic of great interest. Translation from the year plan to daily plan with complex practice every day. In other words, from the, micro, from the macro cycle to the micro cycle. Before handing you over to Ms. Professor Martin, allow me to tell you a little bit about our guest. He's a former Netherlands coach for over 28 years. He has won over 60 European medals. He has won as a coach an Olympic silver medal in Athens 2004, women's singles, coaching Mia Odina. Good afternoon, Martin. Good evening there in the Netherlands. Welcome to our program. 
Thank you for sharing with our audience and receiving us from your home in Amsterdam. We can ask you to take control over the presentation and share your screen. Um, good afternoon, everybody in um, uh, Pan Am. Uh, good evening in Europe, uh, and maybe good night in Asia. I don't know where, where you are at the moment. Um, today, uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, the translation of a year plan to daily practice, at least um, how I see that and how I do that uh, with, uh, with players. Um, I did that in the past uh, with uh, the Dutch national team, of course. And at the moment when I'm practicing with, uh, with national squads or for instance, with in the practice camps uh, with um, uh, Pan Am players, I use the same method as I did in the past as well. Uh, I want, I'm going to share now my screen and And this is a topic for, for, for today. Uh, we, uh, we are going to talk about uh, the year plan and then we go from the year plan to, uh, to the daily practice. And this is the, the, the first uh, session of uh, three in uh, the upcoming uh, weeks, I think. Uh, today, on the 2nd of March, we will talk about uh, complex, what I call complex training and individual training. Um, then in the next session on 6th of April, we, I will talk about the distribution of those kind of training of complex training or individual training over a week and over a month. So how you distribute it uh, uh, in, in a longer period than just one day. And of course, uh, many of you are working in a group of players and not uh, only with uh, one player on court. And if you want to do that uh, in your group, then um, you have some other, sometimes organizational problems. And that's what I want to discuss and, and tell you about my experience on the, on the 4th uh, of May. But uh, first of all, I think uh, we should start with uh, some uh, definitions. And first of all, uh, I think we should uh, uh, explain a little bit of what, what I think is what individual training is, individual practice. And for me, individual training, individual practice is training based on the needs of just one player to improve the match performance of that player. Um, so when I talk about individual training, I talk about a very specific player and I talk about the needs of that only player and what that player needs to improve to get a better result in the match. So I'm not talking about uh, uh, improving the, uh, the skills of the player. Um, of course, that's a part of the individual training, but I'm interested uh, in individual training in what the outcome is in matches. And I also used already the term complex training and um, I never saw that word somewhere in, in the literature, but uh, um, I, maybe I invented myself that word, but complex training is, is a training session with all the skills that one player need included in every exercise. And then you see small words in brackets as much as possible. Uh, of course, it's not always possible to do, uh, to pay attention to all the needs of that one particular player in every exercise. But uh, as we are going to see in, uh, in, the, in the next slides, we will try to do so. And we try to make it really as good as possible. And with needs, I mean skills, 
that can be technical skills, and that can be the, uh, the, the, the performance of a uh, backhand drop shot. It can be a tactical skill. Uh, it can be a physical skill. It can be a mental skill. And it also can be a lifestyle skill. Sorry, moment. And maybe uh, you are not so used to practice lifetimes, lifestyle skills. But for me, that's a very important part of individual training and complex training. And maybe you can translate that in a way that you say, um, I also look at the attitude of the player in the practice. So not only the technical and the technical, and the physical and the mental skill, but also uh, their attitude towards uh, players, um, colleague players, uh, coaches, but also material, rackets, shuttles, and things like that. So if we know what uh, individual training and complex training is, then we can go further on. And what do I want as a coach? And I hope and I think that you want exactly the same as myself as a coach. I want to work on improvement of all the skills. I want to work on improvement of all the needs of a particular player at the same time. Um, we all know that uh, if we are working with players and uh, we see a lot of things, uh, what, uh, what um, we think they are doing wrong. And, and then we say, we have to uh, improve this and we have to make that better. Uh, that technical stroke, that uh, technical part in the game, in the service situation, uh, in defense, in double, whatever. Uh, or we say, um, when somebody gets uh, exhausted at the end of the uh, of a hard session in practice or at the end of the of the of the third game, um, he must have the mental skills to really really continue and make the uh, the match bring the match to a good end. So we always look more or less to the weak points of a player, but. We also must give room for the strong skills as well. And probably that's not new, new for all of you, because I think that all of you are experiencing with players that when you practice with somebody and you only focus on the weak points, um, it could be very, very demotivating for a particular player just to work on the weak points. And then it could be very, very nice uh, to also give room in a practice for the strong points. If somebody has a very good, very good uh, sliced drop shot, give him the possibility to do that. It will motivate this player also to work on the weak points as well. Uh, I don't think this is new, but I think that in many, many cases, we are forget this, we're forgetting this, and players get not really motivated to do what we want them to do. But why do I want to work uh, on all those skills at the same time? And why do I want to give room to strong skills as well? So weak skills and strong skills. And um, first of all, it's very logical. There's no time to improve one by one. And if uh, we start uh, with beginners and we learn them uh, to play a service um, and we wait for the next strokes, learning the next strokes uh, to the, until the time that, uh, that that player can can produce a very, very good, uh, perfect service, then we are weeks, weeks away already. So there's no time to improve every shot one by one. So we must uh, always uh, combine skills and try to, uh, to get faster uh, in our practice progress. But also I think 
all those skills are connected in the game to each other. So um, if we want to uh, deliver a good practice for a player, I think we should copy that's what's happening in matches as well. And isolated skills are not part of the match. Skills are all always connected to each other. Uh, technical skills, tactical skills, physical skills. Uh, one skill cannot do it without the other. So if they are connected in the game and we want to make the practice a copy of what's happening in the game, then we should uh, include all the skills at the same time in our practice. Um, and then, of course, I think there is a, a, a big, uh, big issue. When, when do you start with individual training and do it in a complex way? Uh, uh, individual based on the skills and the needs of one player and complex um, with all the skills involved in one exercise. And then I think uh, we have to look at uh, the level of players. And if we look at, uh, at, at beginners, uh, um, over here, beginners, you see that we are doing group practice most of the time. And uh, the practice is for all participants the same. Uh, probably we, we have a group year plan. We know a little bit what we want to do this week, next week, where we want to go to uh, in two months time, three months time, and maybe where you want to be in, uh, in one year. And if you want to have some reference, then look in the BWF level one uh, coach manual, uh, when to do what in that chapter, you can find something about uh, a group plan and what you need to do in what sequence after another. And of course, when you start with beginners, some of them, they will go faster than others. And some of them uh, have need more time to, um, uh, to learn something or um, uh, some strokes they are mastering faster than the other ones. So in the end, uh, if you have a group, you have to do already a little bit individual training, but we call that differentiation. So, for instance, if with a beginner you do something, or with a group of beginners, something in, in drop shots, some of them can do it just uh, standing on the back line. Some of them can do it already running from the, from the net to the back and then play the drop shot. That's already some kind of differentiation. And if we continue with players, then we come to a group who are already more advanced. Um, but then still we use group practice. More or less the participants are on the same level. Uh, again, we use a group year plan. We have now also goals and needs for this specific group, but it's still a group. But uh, of course you can already differentiate. And now already we can also have a little bit complex planning. We can try in one exercise to do more than one skill in the practice at the same time. So I call that complex group training. And then if we continue, then we come to, let's say what, what we are talking about with most of the national teams, that's what we call high performance. Then it's, those players are advanced players as well, but they are high performance players. They are international players uh, having international results, playing international events. And now it's not anymore group practice. Now it's really individual training. So if you want to make uh, people better at this level, you have to go to individual training. If you spend with one player uh, time on things he already is aware of, he can do it already, 
but if it's not that good in the group, then you lose time in the uh, improvement of that one particular player. So you need to do individual training. Over here, you've got then, of course, your individual year plan based on an individual analysis. And of course, you've got an individual training program and it is a complex training because you want to do all the skills at the same time in all the exercises. What do you need then as a coach to do so? With beginners, you need the knowledge what's presented in the, the BWF level one coach course. You need technical, tactical, physical, mental knowledge. In your plan, you need process targets. And I hope that everybody knows the difference between process targets and product targets. A process target is um, mastering a skill, mastering uh, the cross smash, for instance. A product target mentioned over here is a result is winning a match, becoming the national champion. That's a product tar target. But with beginners, you need, let's say, the, lot, the, 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 the knowledge you've, you learned in the, the level one course on technical, technical, physical, and mental areas. And of course, also a little bit on lifestyle. Advanced, you need knowledge about the average of the group. So you have to know how to analyze the group in all those aspects as well. Not only any more process targets, but also product targets. And of course, if you talk about product targets, you need periodization, and that's presented in the level two of the BWF courses. If we come to advanced and high performance, then you need specific analyze specific knowledge on individual analysis on all those aspects and over here i said for the first time also the lifestyle because i think over here it's becoming really really uh, important that uh, your lifestyle is in a way that it really improves your performance in high performance so over here we need individual process targets individual product product targets you have you need an individual year plan and you need individual analyzer and then we talk about organization skills what you need as a coach um over here in this area with beginners the organization of a practice is quite easy if you have a group of eight players or 16 players and they all have to do exactly the same then it's quite easy to do so. Uh, they come together, you tell them what to do, and you control what they are doing. Everybody is doing exactly the same. But over here already, because the, the average, uh, the group, and you start already to do a little bit differentiation in product and process, the organization of your training is already a little bit more difficult. Over here, because everything is individual, it will be even more complicated, especially when your group is quite big. And um, most of the national teams, uh, if I make an example, uh, in, in my days when I was working with the Dutch national team, we always had a group with between 18 and 22, sometimes 24 players. So if you want to make practice where uh, you work on individual points with all the players, then you have to imagine that if you want to organize that in a proper way, it should be, it's quite com complicated. Uh, in didactic, it's complicated. It, in methodology, it's very complicated. So you really need experience um, uh, to do so. And how do you get that? In fact, you get it uh, quite easy. Uh, trial and error, that's for one. Uh, secondly, look to other coaches. 
um, I was, uh, uh, when I started as a coach, uh, as a professional coach with, uh, with the national team, my, uh, my intention was always when I went to a tournament, uh, I have to sit, of course, as a coach uh, and watch my players and help them uh, in coaching. But I also went always to the practice hall to see how other coaches are working with their players, what type of exercise they are doing. Uh, and I saw a big difference between, for instance, Indonesian uh, teams or uh, German teams or Danish teams. And that's the way uh, to learn and to get experience, to, to get the knowledge and let's say the organizational skills to come from a, a, a let's say an easy practice to a very complicated, complex individual training. And the, today and uh, in four weeks time and in the third lecture uh, well, in May, we are talking about this part of the, uh, uh, so when you're working with, with beginners, of course you can start also to do this a little bit, but probably there's no need to do so. Of course you can experiment, but this is where we are going to talk about. So it's always about advanced players, high performance, with an individual year plan, based on an individual analysis and they will get an individual individual training program with complex training where all the skills are included in every exercise so what are we going to practice what how do we get there and i think um, there are four stages uh, to get uh, to the contents of your individual complex training uh, in stage one i think as a coach you have to make a profound analysis of the individual player technically tactically physical mental and lifestyle but not only you as a coach have to do that i also think the player himself or herself needs to do that. He should know himself, herself very well to get the best results out of their own. And then you come to stage, stage, stage two. And in stage two, player and coach are going to make process targets, product targets. What do we want to achieve on short term, middle term, long term what do we need to improve in skills what kind of results do we want to produce in what time scale then we come to stage two now it's the work of the coach because you are the uh, the expert on this and you have the knowledge uh, you're educated uh, to uh, to make it so you can make an individual year plan. But you see over here, I also put the player inside. Because you as a coach can make a year plan, but the player should do it. So he should always be involved in the way you are making your year plan, your individual year plan. If you do it apart from the player, then it's your plan. It's not the plan of the player. And it should be the player and the coach working together uh, on the process and the product, product targets. So the player should be involved as well. Then we come to stage four. And that's where we make from this year plan the complex training. And again, for me, the players are involved. And in fact, um, uh, how did I do that with, with, my, with my players? It was very simple. Uh, it was a year plan. Uh, we had monthly plans. But for instance, before uh, the beginning of the week on Sunday morning, I was working from those plans. I was working out the individual training sessions for the upcoming week. 
I did that on Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, it was sent to players. They could make comments on their own practice. That came to me on Sunday afternoon, and then I could change a little bit, if necessary. Or contact the player and say, no, 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 we are not going to change it because of this and this. But I always want to have the player involved. Why do I want to have the player involved? Because he's the center of your work as a coach. And he should be involved. He is the one on court who has to do the thing. He is the one who needs to be improved. He is the one who has to make the match results, not you as a coach. So that's why I think the player should always be involved. Okay, I think uh, time for a little break. Okay, Richard, uh, again, share my screen. Uh, Am I sharing now? Hope so. Yes, you're good. Okay, thank you. Then we come to uh, to the, 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 the practical part. Um, uh, I'm not I'm not going to talk about uh, how to make uh, how to make an individual year plan. I did that in a webinar in April 2020. It was called Plan for Success. And there I explained how I make a year plan in detail. Uh, I had an example for 2019. I will use that year plan, by the way, now uh, as well. And it was made for an international uh, men's singles players. Um, if you want to have the, the, the slides of that uh, webinar, no problem at all. Um, just uh, send me an email. And, and I think in the end, uh, you, in the last slide, you will find my email address. And I can send you to that, uh, that. And if you want to have questions on that, uh, you can come back to me with, with questions on how I'm doing that. Um, and then um, um, uh, I will give you an example of a, of a training session based on the year plan. And I will give you some comments on what and how and why uh, I decided to do a couple of things uh, like this. So, um, um, as we said, uh, we have to make a profound analysis of, uh, of a player before we are going, we are able to make uh, an, um, uh, a year plan. Uh, we have to do that uh, together with, uh, with the player as well. And with this uh, guy, he was a men's single player, international, he was early 20, a very hard worker. Uh, play was based on running, uh, on the running speed and, and smashes, so he was, uh, always trying to play uh, very fast. He had quite good uh, technical skills, strong guy in his shoulders, in his uh, legs. So um, it, that was okay. He made a lot of uh, mistakes, especially in the, in the longer rallies because he was always impatient. Uh, so we were sitting down discussing this and in the end uh, uh, we came up uh, with, uh, with this um, uh, with this year plan for, for this was for two, uh, 2019 as you see over here 2019 um, in that period uh, this guy had to uh, uh, qualify for the uh, European Games and uh, in those days we were still thinking that uh, the Tokyo Olympic Games were uh, in uh, 2020 so the Olympic qualifying period started over here and uh, so we had to play the qualifying uh, um, uh, tournaments as well to get uh, ranking points and how to go on ranking. That's also in how to get up in ranking. That's also in that webinar uh, plan for success. So you can find that over there. But we made some uh, long-term um, process targets. Consistency, many mistakes. Consistency, racket handling. It was one part where he was not good enough and that's why he made uh, many mistakes. Also, consistency, racket handling, mistakes. Soft shots from the back, not only smashes, but also soft shots. Make this game a little bit more complete. Uh, 
net shots straight and cross. It, uh, straight and cross. It's not over here as well, but that was one of the things we saw. And then we saw that because he was always playing fast and with a lot of smashes, he had always the same pace. And that's why we put over here. So we must change the rhythm once in a while so that your opponent cannot really um, get used to how you are playing. So we build in a couple of weeks where we also focus on changing the rhythm. And then um, on short term, we said, okay, defense together with racket handling, net strokes, because this was not good enough. Uh, defense together with strokes from the back, more attention on that. Net again, defense, strokes at the back, and this to be decided when we had this done, this one we will decide. Okay, that's what we're going to do over here. But you see already, that there are a lot of things at the same time. Eh? Over here, you we want to work every exercise to all of these points. Over here, we want to work on defense together with that. Over here, we want to work on change forward, change rhythm, and net strokes. So uh, I explained already that um, why I wanted to do that because I think everything is connected to each other, and we don't have the time to do it in, another, in, a, in a different way. So again, process targets mentioned over here, product targets mentioned over there. And then we can say, okay, if we look at the blue line, then we see we've got four uh, targets over here. We've got change of rhythms from the back. That's what we want to do in this so every practice we can find out according to the year plan what we want to do and if you look to the blue one then it's this is in the preparation period eh? coming to the first tournament it is uh, uh, preparation one over here so physical i want to do it uh, high aerobic training um, i want to do strokes from the back um, technical and tactical because i also want to include soft strokes from the back i want to change the rhythm that's also technical of course um, i want to in my practice i want to work on all those things eh? consistency racket handling net shots so I can choose for this as well. But, and also because it's the preparation period, it's far away from uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, from the competition period. This, was, this is the competition period. Uh, no match practice over here. Mentally, that can be quite tough. If you look at this, the second example, the green line, then we see it's a pre-competition period. So physically, my exercises should be uh, anaerobic and maybe speed. Uh, if I look to the other things, I have to do something in defense and strokes from the back. I still need to be focused on changing the rhythm. I have my choice of four uh, long-term process targets over here. And I need to do some match practice because I was quite close uh, to this competition, even I'm in between two competitions as well. So I need to pay attention to that. And then I make for the first, for the blue one, I make this kind of training. Um, for everybody, I think this is, this is common, warming up at different types of rubbing. Uh, dynamic stretching exercises and uh, hitting related to uh, the, the, the main and the second part of the practice. Uh, introduction, one against one, racket handling, change of rhythm, change of rhythm. That what was one of the, uh, the long-term goals, also the racket handling. In the first part of the practice, 
I will do multi feeding. Why? No, no I'm not uh, multi feeding. Yeah, multi feeding. Um, I want to do it uh, uh, in a high aerobic way. So I take uh, uh, three times uh, 10 series of 12 shuttles. Um, rest pause is 15 seconds. Series pause after 10 is 90 seconds. And the heart rate for this guy was between 100. 172, 181. And because I wanted um, to do a lot of shots from the back, eh? when you remember that, um, going back over here, eh? soft shots from the back, I will, I will feed three out of four shots to the back. And I will tell my player who I'm practicing with, two out of those three should be soft shots. In my second exercise, one against two, so not multi-feeding, it's one against two, the two are standing side by side, and I explain later why. Three out of four, four they should feed to the back or full part, times 10 minutes, and uh, so two series, 10 minutes, one against two, series pause in between 90 seconds. Consistency and attack. And if I do consistency, then it's patience, but attacking is change of rhythm. So I can work over here on consistency, on making not so many mistakes. Uh, I can work on the moment of attack, and I can make work on the change of rhythm. And in my coaching, I should work on that. So I'm working on, again, uh, a lot of things at the same time. Uh, shots from the back, soft. Consistency, no mistakes. Attack, change of rhythm. Moment of attack, tactical. And in the end, do jogging, static stretch, if you like to do that, and call. And um, and probably you know that uh, there are um, some discussions about the use of static stretch, uh, yes or no, and how it works, and whether it works, yes or no. And in the introduction, um, a very basic exercise over here. So it's just, um, we start very easy. Um, uh, one feeder comes to the net, play the shuttle left, right, left, right, left, right. It's a kind of defense exercise and he's always playing back. So left, right, predictable defense to the net. The feeder is playing to the side no change of rhythm at all. So that's the basic exercise, but I don't want to have that exercise. I want to have the more advanced exercise where left, right is not predictable, not only feeding to the sides, but also to the net, defense to the net table, but also the fast defense. And if we do this, then we get change of rhythm as well. So it looks more like this. So shuttle is coming to the side, moving, uh, short at the net, moving back again, uh, again, not changing to the other side, and again to the net. Not predictable. So this player is allowed to play everywhere in this area. And here he needs to play back play back, play back. When he goes over here and over there, then it's, let's say, the same pace. But when he has to go to the net, then it's uh, a change of rhythm because he has to accelerate. And of course, you can make this exercise even more advanced to say, OK, this player is not only using this one, this area, but also using this and this area. So he is allowed to play this, 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 and over here and over there. 
And then you can say to this player, hey, wait a moment. You don't play uh, the fast one, but you play the soft shot from the back. And again, I'm working then on one of the skills what this player would need. Um, what's my coaching? Grip, racket head. Racket head should point to, uh, to, to the net, not down to the floor, and acceleration. So in this very simple exercise, I can already work on a lot of things at the same time. Um, then we do the, uh, the, the multi-feeding. And if we look at uh, the multi-feeding, uh, it's like this. Everybody knows that. Up. And, and so you play to the four corners. But of course, you are not going to do this in a predictable, predictable way. And you play um, at random in all the corners. Um, but also play sometimes the smash over here. Um, and now it's very important how you, um, how you do this multi-feeding. Because if you just play one, two, three, four, always in the same pace, then it's no change of rhythm. Um, if you sometimes hit it very high and then very fast to the back, or slow to the net, or very fast to the net, then you can do change of rhythm. Um, change feeding positions, not only from this side, but also from this side. I see, by the way, a lot of coaches or players feeding from this side. I don't think that's right. Because shuttles are not coming from the middle, they are coming from this side and from that side. Um, also change the number of shuttles. Um, not every rally, and in this uh, uh, example we saw it was uh, 12 shuttles, um, don't um, change the number of shuttles, not only 12, but you can go from, let's say, the first rally uh, 9, and the, the second one 11, and then 13, 15, 16, and then back to um, 15, 13, 11, and things like that. I told you already, changing the rhythm. And I can do a lot of things in my coaching. Racket head up, relax in the fingers, so I can work on technical skill, change grips. I can say, hey, wait a moment. If we do this exercise, I want to have you to play more shots over here. Soft shots from the back. I also can do already net shots because I want them to do it. This one, cross, straight, whatever. And I even can say, okay, but sometimes if you're really under a good shuttle, attack. Multi-feeding. Nothing is perfect. And not we as a coach, we are not perfect. Multi-feeding is not game-like. When I play the shuttle over here, feed over here, and he's playing the drop shot over there. And the second shuttle is coming from here again. That's not game-like. The next shuttle should come from this place, but in multi-feeding, it's almost impossible to move always with your shuttles around the court to do that. So the shuttles are coming from the wrong direction. I already told you a little bit about attention, how to feed, fast, slow, uh, down, and because it's not game-like, I never do it close to the competition. Close, close to the competition, I use one against one and sometimes one against two. In the second part of the practice, I said we do one against two. And now you see uh, the two are here, are feeding. I always want the one who is practicing starting to serve. Men singles, short serves. And of course, you can say, hey, wait a moment, why is this player not standing over there? I want those players standing side by side so that he 
or she is covering this part of the court and he is covering that part of the court. If you don't do that, if they play doubles, this is not single anymore. Again, I tell them, play more to the back. And I tell him, okay, three out of four should be soft shots down. Returns, if they smash, more to the net so that you have to come to the net. Again, I look at racket handling, consistency. Soft play, accelerate, then I can get a change of rhythm. Of course, you can change the feeding position. Sorry, this is, no, no, this is not correct what I'm saying over here because we are not working with uh, my mistake. <laughs> I made, this is uh, from, uh, from the, the slide before. So forget what's standing over here. Yeah. One against two. It's more game-like. But you have to stay side by side. It's always fast because those guys, they have to play just short distances. For him, it's very difficult to see the right gap for scoring. If he is outplaying, for instance, this guy over there, then he should score over there on this side. But he's still waiting over there. So it's very difficult for him to see the gap for scoring. So close to competition, I can use this, but uh, one against one is better. But also in this exercise, I pay attention to at least five or six of the targets, process targets, I have set for myself and for this player in the play. Richard, it's yours now. Thank you, Martin. Uh, we'll now have a quick uh, question and answer section. Please, if you have any questions or comments, write them down in the chat box. Anything we don't address here, we will try and get back to you personally. Um, the first question, however, comes from... Uh, Antonio. Antonio is asking, what do you think is the right age to start a child in competitive badminton? Um, competitive badminton, uh, then, um, uh, yeah, it depends a little bit on uh, where you are in this world because, um, uh, uh players should be mental, um, uh, be ready to do competitive, uh, uh competitive, uh, uh, play. Um, I think, um, in Europe, we will start, let's say, around really competitive around the age of. Maybe in other parts of the world, it could be a little bit younger. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you very much, Professor Martin, for such an interesting lecture. Do you have any final words? Um, yeah, final words. I think I spent a little bit too much time on my uh, my lecture, so there was no uh, not not enough time to really uh, come up with questions. Um, but in the, um, um, on the first slide, I think, uh, but also on this slide, uh, there is my email address. And um, so if you have a questions, just uh, send, uh, send your questions to that email address and for sure I will, uh, I will answer you back. Okay, thank you very much. To our badminton family, we invite you to our next webinar entitled Control, Evaluation and Strength Training in Badminton. This webinar will be held next Tuesday, March 9th at 3 p.m. Lima time, where we'll have the pleasure of having Professor Alberto Garrido from Mexico. We also encourage you to write us through the chat box to make proposals for topics you are interested in. Also, we invite you to check back, check out our Badminton Pan American Confederation YouTube channel, where you can see this and other conferences that we have held. On behalf of Badminton Pan America Confederation, we thank you for your participation. Stay well, stay safe. Thank you very much.